Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at square wave signal generation, or in other words, if you've got a microcontroller, you've got a pin, and out of that pin you want to generate a square wave with a specified frequency. All right, before we get to that, let's just quickly review timers so that we can understand how this process will work. So a timer in the microcontroller, we're going to be thinking of a 16-bit one, but this is very similar for an 8-bit one as well. If we put time there, and we put time account on the y-axis. The way a timer works is it counts up, reaches the top value, overflows back to zero, and repeats. And that's all that happens. So in the normal timing mode, oh, yeah, it's a little bit crooked, this is all that happens. And so this value here, which I'm dotting across here, this is the top value, which for 16-bit timer equals 2 to the power of 16 minus 1. Now, nothing hard here so far, and we all know that if we were to zoom in on a particular section, that we would see the staircase of counting 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Each one of these little steps here is set by some of the registers associated with the timer. And that's how we can control the frequency of our square wave generation. So, back to our square wave now. What we want to be able to do is that instead of counting up to the maximum 2 to the 16 minus 1 every time, we can control our timer to count up to let's say, an arbitrary value between 1 and 2 to the power of 16 minus 1. And what this will do is, is it will enable us to vary the frequency at which the timer resets itself. So if you think of this new line here, which is our new limit, if we were to continue with the old one, up to the top value, you'd see how we've effectively halved the frequency when we halved the top value. And various proportions will, will also work in this fashion. So by adjusting top, which I'm going to put in quotes here because it's not 2 to the 16 minus 1, but it's the value the counter counts up to, the top value, we can set the frequency of the overflow. Alright, so there's our frequency control. How do we get a square wave from this? Well, at each compare match event, this is what they're technically called, not quite an overflow, but a compare match event, where their timer count value equals our top value, we can tell the micro to do something. So we can say set a flag or interrupt or control a pin, i.e. the pin on our microcontroller. And one of the things we can do is when the timer reaches our compare match point is we can stick the timer in what's known as clear timer on compare match mode. And basically this mode, CTC mode, means when the timer equals our top value, reset the timer and do an action. And to generate a square wave, we toggle. Alright, so if I was to draw, sorry, I'm running out a little bit of room here. The pin voltage here versus time. If we have this compare match event here, you could say toggle the pin, and that compare match event here, toggle it down again. This compare match event here, toggle it up, and so forth. So you can see the frequency of our square wave is half of that of our original uh, 
timer uh, overflow or to compare match, but we still have managed to create a square wave using just a toggle. Toggle on compare match equals square wave. And by adjusting top, so adjusting that top value, basically bringing this line up and down, we can adjust frequency of the square wave. All right, and it's good to draw this out and actually prove that for yourself, that as I raise this line, these compare match events start taking longer, therefore the period takes longer, and the frequency gets slower, right? Obviously, being the inverse of these. Okay, so how do we set this up? We've got a whole lot of registers in this micro, and we need to start looking at how they all fit together. <clears throat> now, in our micro, as it turns out, our timer is connected to multiple pins. We've got A, B, and C, and they represent in TCCR1A, A, B, and C over here. So each of these pairs of bits represents each of these physical pins. And on each of them, we can then choose, when we're in compare output mode, what it does. So for example, we can disconnect it, we can toggle it, clear it, or set it. But here's our guy, we want to toggle it. So let's start our register declaration. TCR1, A is equal to, we'll do this in binary. We want channel A, let's say, because that's the one that's actually connected to our, let's say, light, that we're going to adjust frequency to, or speaker, or whatever it happens to be. So this is a hardware decision, whether you use A, B, or C, noting that they're separate and physical pins. So we were interested in channel A, so we can straight away cross out B and C, they're of no interest to us. And we can see we want COM1 A, COM timer 1 A1 is equal to 0. Next bit along, COM1 A0 is equal to 1. 0, 0, because we're not interested in B, 0, 0, because we're not interested in C. And then we get to our waveform generation mode bits, which are these two here. Now for these ones, we need to look at the table below. We've already decided we're operating in CTC mode. We know that because we're operating, we're trying to generate a square wave with a variable frequency. CTC mode is the easiest one to do that. You can do it with PWM, but it's much more complicated and a lot coarser. You get a lot more accuracy with CTC. So we know we're using CTC. And within this table, which has got lots of options in it, we see CTC mode there a couple of times. The difference between these two is the top value. One of them has OCRNA as the top value, and one of them has ICRN. ICRN is the input capture register, so that in this CTC mode you can measure an incoming signal, uh, measure the frequency of it, and then generate, let's say, a proportion or the same frequency back out again. All right, so that's if you're using input capture, which we're not doing. OCR is a register that we can set, and therefore we can control what the frequency is from within software. So that's the one we want to use here. So CTC mode, the two bits that we need to set, 1, 1, and 1, 0. Those are them here, 1, 1, and 1, 0. And they're going to be both 0, as you see here, for this particular application. So 0, 0. And I like to go through and tick those once we set those, because half of them, the other two that we have to set, oops, all right, those are in the wrong row, are actually in the next register down. So if we come down, we see the next one that we've got to set is TCCR1B, or this one here. All right, the first two bits in that are to do with input capture, so we don't need those. That's reserved, so then we only have WGM13 and 12. So let's set these. TCCR1B is equal to, on binary, 0, 0, 0, because we don't care. The first is 1, 3. 1, 3 is 0 there. So we can tick that one off that we're going to have done that. 
and then the last four bits are one two which we can see here is one so that's the only one out of those out of those bits which was in fact uh, one and that just leaves us with the three chip, uh, clock select bits now these unfortunately are the only hard ones that we've got to deal with here the rest have been pretty easy so we've got three bits left to set and in order to know how to set them we need to now know what frequency we want our square wave to be at so that's part of this decision making process for our bits so we've got two decisions to make one is which prescaler we're going to use for the clock select bits and two is what is the value going to be in our output compare register which remembering the OCR is this value here OCR1A all right so that's this top value that we're getting the timer to run up to matching triggering something so doing some sort of action and then resetting that timer all right and remember we also set that when we chose this mode inside here so we've got two things to choose from here so let's take an example let's say I want my square wave to be at a thousand Hertz so if we feed in the numbers that we've got here we've got thousand Hertz is equal to using this equation here 2 times n times 1 plus o c r 1 a all right so once again the two unknowns in this are n and o c r 1 a now n can be any of these values here all right while o c r 1 a can be from 0 to 2 to the 16 minus 1 so straight away you see there's a lot more flexibility in OCR1A versus than what we have in N which means it's a lot simpler to actually choose one of the prescalers first and then come back and then see whether we can actually find an OCR1A value that satisfies the left hand side or the result of this equation so it's a trial and error approach try a number see if it works if it doesn't try another prescaler see if it works and so forth so it can be a little bit iterative there for the purposes of this uh, for this exercise this one's actually quite easy so I know that if I can get 8,000 on this bottom line I'm going to get a thousand here so 2 times <coughs> it's n times something is equal to 8,000 so if I was to go OCR1A equals 499 1 plus 499 is 500 times 2 is a thousand times n which will make us 8 uh, will then give us our 1000 Hertz so in this case it was nice and simple note that if we had a 8-bit timer that's greater than 255 so we wouldn't be able to use that prescaler and we'd have to choose a different one and iteratively try and solve this problem all right so also note that we got exactly the number we wanted which is not always going to be the case but with messing around, trying around a few of these different combinations, normally you can get pretty close to the value you want. So the final three bits we want then is for this line here, for our clock select bits. And therefore we get 0, 1, 0 as our final bits. All right, how to set this up? I prefer to use, once again, the defines that are in the header file. So I would do something like this like we saw on the bit masking TCTR1A is equal to now note there was actually only one bit that was one within this register so the only one I actually need to set is COM1A0 and that is actually the define in the header file COM1A0 and I'm not doing OR equals because I don't, I'm setting all the bits in that register I'm not saying leave some and only change some I'm setting all of them TCCR1B equals, and we can do something similar, one left left, what are the bits we're setting? So we're setting WGM12 uh, was one, WGM12, and we'll all that with one left left, and of the prescaler bits, CS11.
as such. Let's make sure those look like ones. Okay, and as well as that, we'll set OCR1A is equal to 499, find settle and decimal, and then we'd also need to correspondingly set the data direction register so that our OCN pin, i.e. this guy, is an output. And that will up to you to work out which one that's associated with. Remember, it's actually a good idea that the DDR is set up last. All right, and that's how you can set up CTC mode to generate a known frequency square wave. Um, using these defines makes it nice and simple to be able to read back later on. And uh, hopefully, uh, if you implement that on your microcontroller, this will work for you. So just quickly to summarize, square wave generation, we're using CTC mode, toggle on compare match, so keyword toggle, we're using the CTC mode, um, we adjust the frequency by adjusting this top value here, which we can set via OCR1A or 1B or C, depending on which, which channel we're using. Um, and of course we use the OCR value, not the input capture register value there. And so the only hard bit is basically a little bit of trial and error here to get this equation to make sense.